Heterocycles are ring compounds that have at least one atom that's not carbon. Many typical examples are five-membered rings. The most common ones are pyrrole, furan with oxygen, tetrahydrofuran also has oxygen but no double bonds, and thiophene. Because each of these heteroatoms has an unshared pair of electrons that can participate in a pi system, these structures I've shown with double bonds are all aromatic. They have six pi electrons. I'll talk a little bit about the aromatic chemistry toward the end of this video. Beyond these four, there are other heterocycles that are real common. Imidazole is a structural component in proteins that turns out to have catalytic activity, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit too. Pyridine is an aromatic heterocycle that is a nitrogen analog to benzene. Now I've put aniline up here just to call your attention to the fact that this is not a heterocycle. It is a cyclic compound that has nitrogen, but the nitrogen is not in the ring. Now oxygen heterocycles are quite common, but the nitrogen heterocycles are widely dispersed in organic chemistry and especially in biology. And it would be easy to make the argument that they're the most important type of compounds on the planet. Take a look at these examples. Conine is a simple heterocycle. It's found in hemlock extracts. It's the toxic component that causes death. LSD is a complicated compound that has two heterocyclic rings. There's a five-membered ring and a six-membered ring. Morphine and codeine also have two heterocyclic rings. One is a nitrogen ring and the other is an oxygen ring. There's the nitrogen heterocycle. It's a six-membered ring. And here's the oxygen heterocycle. These guys are important tools in pain management. Cytosine is an example of a heterocycle that's involved in nucleic acids, RNA and DNA. There are five altogether that are common. And histidine is an important part of proteins. It's a building block which puts an imidazole ring in a protein. That imidazole ring can serve a catalytic function in transferring protons, as I'll talk about in just a little bit. And finally, I'm showing you the structures of NADH and NAD. This is a pair of compounds that are related by differing oxidation levels, and it's Mother Nature's equivalent to sodium borohydride. Take a look at this. There are a pair of hydrogens shown on this top carbon. One of these hydrogens is transferred with a pair of electrons to reduce another functional group, for example, carbonyl. This hydride transfers to carbonyl while the pi bond breaks in exactly the same manner that happens for sodium borohydride reduction. This occurs because this pi bond can slip up here and this nitrogen pair of electrons can slip down here to make an aromatic ring. And you know that making an aromatic ring is energetically downhill. So part of the driving force for this reaction is to go from a higher energy heterocycle to an aromatic heterocycle. I've shown two arrows. This reaction can work in either way. With removal of a proton by a base attached to the protein, there's a pair of electrons that becomes available to form a pi bond. If this hydrogen moves with a pair of electrons, a hydride transfer, this regenerates the NADH. While we're losing aromaticity, you're also satisfying the fact that there's positive charge on nitrogen that's relieved by the transfer of these hydrogens. So there's a balance between making the pyridinium ion, which is higher energy, and the aromatic ring, which is lower energy. And that's a perfect balance that lets the NAD-NADH pair act as oxidizing and reducing agents. Heterocycles occur widely in nature in important roles as you would expect, these amine heterocycles can act as bases. For example, pyridine has a lone pair of electrons here. That can be protonated. The pKa of the conjugate acid of this base is 5.1. In other words, pyridine is a weak base. Nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, and the electrons in that sp2 orbital are held rather tightly. Nevertheless, we commonly use pyridine as a base in organic chemistry when we want to remove protons released by strong acids. Imidazole is a stronger base. 
The pKa of this conjugate acid is 7.0. Notice that this is perfect for proton transfers in physiological medium, which is just slightly above 7.0. The unshared pair of electrons on this nitrogen is available for protonation. And because the pKa is 7.0, we know that at 7.0 there's an equal amount of the conjugate acid and the imidazole base. On the other hand, because there are equal amounts of unprotonated and protonated imidazole structure, this ring can readily transfer a proton to a base. This could be the oxygen of a hydroxyl group, for instance. In any case, it will have an unshared pair of electrons that can accept that proton, relieve the positive charge on imidazole. So this guy can act as a proton shuttle in a catalytic manner. It can accept a proton from some acid, become an acid itself, and protonate something that needs to be protonated, something that acts as a base. Very important biological role. Many metabolic reactions are acid catalyzed. And finally, I wanted to comment about the basicity of parole. In principle, parole can act as a base because it has an unshared pair of electrons. However, because that unshared pair is involved in the aromatic ring, it's really not available for sharing. And parole essentially doesn't act as a base. It takes a very strong acid to protonate that nitrogen because when it does, it disrupts the aromaticity. The pKa of the protonated compound, the conjugate acid, is in the range of zero to minus four, depending on what tables you look in. There's controversy about the number, of course, because it is very hard to protonate, so it's hard to measure. Aromatic heterocycles, and I'm just going to write a general one, as two double bonds and an unshared pair in the pi system where this atom Z could be nitrogen, oxygen, or sulfur. Now nitrogen is somewhat problematic, but oxygen and sulfur heterocycles react with electrophiles readily. Electrophilic substitution occurs in the same manner that occurs for benzene. These heterocycles are numbered one, two, and three, and the regius activity of this is strong for the two position. The reaction mechanism is just what you would expect a pair of these pi electrons forms a bond with the electrophile. So the first step is simple addition. This guy has two additional resonance structures, which is why we have Regius selectivity for the two position. This pair of pi electrons can swing over here. Remember, the positive charge skips an atom. And in the third resonance structure, this pair of unshared electrons forms a double bond. This puts a positive charge on the heteroatom nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. And this is an especially stable structure because all atoms have a filled outer shell. This structure can't be formed if we have substitution at the three position. So we have three resonance structures. I'll put them in a set of brackets. And in the second step, just like electrophilic aromatic substitution in benzene, something that can act as a base removes the proton. Let me show you an example to illustrate just how readily this reaction happens. Furan, that's the oxygen aromatic heterocycle, undergoes electrophilic aromatic substitution to replace hydrogen by NO2. This reaction can be done with dilute nitric acid using acetic acid as solvent. By way of contrast, take a look at benzene. To accomplish nitration, we need to use concentrated nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, and heat. Just to be clear and accurate, I should put an H along with this nitrogen. In contrast to the five-membered ring hydrocycles, pyridine, which is truly aromatic, reacts very reluctantly with electrophiles. And the regius selectivity of substitution is at the three position. It's easy to explain the low reactivity. There are two factors. First, the nitrogen that's in the ring is more electronegative than carbon, so it holds the pi electrons tighter because the first step in the mechanism is reaction of the pi electrons with an electrophile. Those pi electrons are less available for reaction and the reaction is slower. And secondly, the reagents that are used for electrophilic aromatic substitution are either Bronsted acids or Lewis acids. In either case, they're drawn to the unshared pair on nitrogen. 
When they bond or complex with that electron pair, that puts a positive charge on nitrogen. That holds the pi electrons even tighter. As a result, pyridine is a poor reactant for electrophilic aromatic substitution.